Payne County, Oklahoma. It's July, and life is good. We are here in uh, Oklahoma's 10th largest city, <laughs> Stillwater, uh, Oklahoma's uh, best county of the 77. Mm-hmm. It is the county of Payne. I'm Father Brian O'Brien, pastor of St. Francis Xavier Catholic Church here in Stillwater. We're on the west side. Come see us. Uh, last week, we had uh, Betsy McNeil, who did a great job kind of telling her story, and then also talking about the Our Lady of Grace Catholic Retreat Center, which we are mm-hmm. blessed to have. So we're on the west side of town. Our Lady of Grace is on the east side of town. And then St. John Catholic Student Center is right kind of in the, in the middle of town. Kind so of we've, right. got our, we've got yeah. our bases covered. Maybe we just need to build something north and south now. <laughs> All right, we'll work on that. All in, all in good time. All in good time. Um, but it is July. We've had a great summer. Lots of just cool stuff we've been really focusing on in our preaching and in a lot of the formation we've been offering, uh, the Eucharistic revival and just calling people into a deeper relationship with uh, Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. But in the month of July, um, Father Healy, who has been on the show before, and he is here again today. Hello, everybody. Um, Father Healy and I have been focusing our preaching on a very specific topic. And we'd like mm-hmm. to, you know, you can't, part, part of the reason we started this podcast five years ago, Father Carrie and I were like, you know, we want to, we want to like talk to our people in between Sundays. Mm-hmm. Um, you can't say everything you want to say in a homily. You know, we, we don't, in the United States, we don't. We don't preach for a half hour, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and so uh, the part of the podcast was to kind of go more in-depth on subjects that maybe we have preached about. So Father Healy and I, in the month of July, we've been focusing on and are going to continue to focus on the Lord's Day, the Sabbath, mm-hmm. reclaiming, the way I phrase it is kind of reclaiming Sundays for, for, the, Lord. for the Lord and for the family. Mm-hmm. Um, now that's a, it's an interesting topic, but it can also be kind of a sensitive topic, but I also think it's a topic I would just say, and this is what I want to talk to Father Healy about, because I think he's got a lot of wisdom on the subject. It's something I think a lot of people don't think about. Um, we get into routines. Um, some are good, some are bad, some are virtuous, some are full of vice. Mm-hmm. And I think the way our culture treats Sundays is one of those non-virtuous habits that we've just, we've kind of gotten to a place, I think if we're honest with ourselves, where Sunday is kind of just another day. Or I think a lot of people would say Sunday morning is different, but then after Mass, Sunday Mm -hmm. is just another day. What we want to do is present the gospel and present something different that Sundays really can be different, and we really want to challenge ourselves and challenge our people to live differently. What right. would you What would you say to that, kind of generally, and then we'll get into some specifics. Right. Well, I, I I think like what you said. I think a lot of people in our culture treat Sunday like it's just any other day of the week, or or rather like it's just part of the weekend. And so this notion. There's no difference between s- a Saturday and a Sunday. Yeah. So the Saturday and Sunday are just, you know, you've got well, the weekdays. Together. Monday through Friday, and the week kind of ends on Friday at 5 o'clock or whatever time you get out of work on Friday, unless you happen to be on a different week, you know, schedule because you are a nurse or, or someone, in, in, and so maybe you get two days off and they're Monday and Tuesday. So we've kind of developed this cultural idea in our society that you have five days where you can be expected to, we have to be, have, have to be at work doing everything else, and then you got two days to do whatever you want to do. Uh, and that might be mowing the lawn. That might be, you know, cleaning the swimming pool. It might be, you know, painting. It might be doing, you know, changing oil on your car. Any any number of the myriad things Or catching up, up on the things that you didn't get done. Right. The other or, five days. You know, or just, you know, you know, watching sports and going to games and, and, and going out to the lake. And, I mean, something that my family did a lot when we were... Growing up, we had this little boat, and we would go out to the Keystone Lake, and nice. And we did that a lot on Sundays. Uh, it was a kind of a leisurely thing. It wasn't really um, something we could do any other day of the week. 
because my dad was at work. But it wasn't, I don't think that we had a very intentional idea. My mom did because she was Catholic and she was trying to encourage us not to be doing yard work and stuff on Sundays. And so um, when my dad was like, let's go to the lake. I was like, yeah, let's go to the lake. But that, you know, that still can play into the general idea of, I, I say my mom, my dad, my dad's a convert to Catholicism. Mm -hmm. He became Catholic when I was 15. And so he had a very strong Protestant work, work ethic and like, if you're not working, you're goofing off. Um, yeah, why are we work goofing off? And there's goofing off, yeah. Right. Um, and goofing off is for recuperating in order to get back to work. Um, and so I think that one of the things that we've been focusing a lot on, like Father O'Brien, like you said, you know, in our homilies, we're talking about how to make Sunday truly different from the rest of the week. And in some sense, to make it the pinnacle of the week, the, the top. You know, last month in our homilies, we were preaching about the Holy Eucharist. Uh, we're in this Eucharistic revival. And so the idea that the Mass is the, is the pinnacle of the day and the most important moment of the day. Well, Sunday Mass is the most important Yeah, we call it the source and the summit, right? The that week. from which everything comes and that to which everything is, right. is, is going. So I think and that Sunday seeing that? Sunday as, in some sense, like the monstrance around the host. Oh, what? You know, like you, you yeah. look at Sunday as being this brilliant golden um, thing oh. surrounding wow. the greatest treasure that we've got. And if we, if I treat Sunday like anything else, and it's like putting the host in a drawer and forgetting about it for a week, and then, I mean, there's a real sense in which we need to carve out time and space to treasure things. So we... You know, I think that there's a lot we could go into on that. Sure. Yeah, know. there's... A, so, so yeah, when we talk about Sundays, let, let's talk about kind of what Sundays look like now. You know, so I think for a lot of people, and this is not us sort of... This is not a judgment. I think we've probably been... I know I have, you know, been guilty of treating Sunday like any other day. Um and what what Sundays look like now for a lot of families um, is, and I think there's kind of varying there's varying sort of levels. I think there are families in our parish and other in other parishes that really take Sundays very seriously in the way that the church envisions it. You know that 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 is, that the Sunday really is a day for the Lord, and a day for the family, and a day for you know, vis visiting others and 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 reaching out to the lonely mm -hmm. and, but I don't. But it's not a very it's not very common. I think for a lot of people, and this is true in Stillwater, it's true in Perkins, it's true in Tulsa, it's true anywhere where people are listening. There are ch like church going people. They go to church at some point during the day, and then the rest of the day is stuff mm -hmm. filled with. Activities and that can be, you know, I think a big difference. I mean, I'm not like that old, but like there's a big difference between when I was a kid and now, and sun like Sunday sports. Mm -hmm. um, when I was a kid, again, I sound like an old man. Get off my lawn, but like <laughs> when when I was a kid, like we there just weren't there weren't practices and there weren't right. games on Sundays and that and now I think a lot of kind of the the growth of like youth sports. Mm -hmm. where they're trying to pack in more practices, more games, more tournaments. And so you end up playing on a Sunday. And I think where that started, like it was, you know, I kind of remember it sort of creeping in and being like, okay, wow, so they're having a practice like on a Sunday night. And then it crept. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're gonna have, now we're going to have practice on a Sunday afternoon and a game on a Sunday afternoon. And, and then you now, have tournaments on sun Saturdays and... And, and it kind creeps, of yes. The prelim, you know, like all the preliminary rounds yeah. going on 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 Saturday. Well, whoever wins the, you know, if you win, then you're you keep, in the then you keep playing. And so mm -hmm. we have now practices and games on Sunday morning, and so like the cr the creep of of the culture, uh, the busyness of the culture, the we got to pack in more stuff, right? Has now it for I think for a lot of families, unfortunately. Has kind of taken over their Sundays, where at where so now, Sunday Mass is now 
we we get there when there's not something else happening. Right. Or we we try to fit it in somewhere if so we can. So we're gonna yes, we're gonna So you we we have a you know, a sports tournament some you know, in Dallas or whatever. So well kids playing at this time and at this time and this time, is there a mass somewhere that we can slide in somewhere right. instead of saying, Whoa, whoa, got this time blocked off. Nothing happens during you know, this is a day for the Lord or even even this is a morning for the Lord. This nobody infringes on this time. Um, we've lost even that. We uh, culturally, yeah. pe- there's it so puts th- pressure on the families and on the on the players. Like, well, hey, if you're going to play the sport, you got to. Yeah, are you in? Or are you out? Up or are you dedicated to our to our team, right. or you know, or not? And 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 so it, this is again not like a judgment on, but it's just it's it's I think it's a it's an opportunity. For, you know, Father Healy and I have talked a lot about it and we we've, we've been talking a lot about it as like a parish staff like what can we do as a parish to help people kind of reestablish to re reclaim mm-hmm. Sunday as the Lord's day. So there's this beautiful document John Paul St. John Paul II um, May of 1998 um he came out with this beautiful document called Dies Domini the, the day, day the, the day of the Lord mm-hmm. and so the 25th anniversary so the, this is the 25th anniversary of of that of that document, that was something really fascinating. It was a, a, just as an aside for everybody listening yeah. to this. So we had a staff meeting on a particular day, and uh, that day was yeah, the, it you, was the feast of the it visitation. Was the feast of the visitation. Yep, <laughs> May thirty first, I think. May was it thirty first? Something like that. I think it was. So it's it it was the day, the twenty fifth. We were going to talk about this as a staff, and Father O'Brien comes to the staff meeting that day and he's like, so guess what, guys? We were going to talk about this, and I just discovered literally 25 years ago, today, it came out. the Holy Father published this document. Yeah. So it's a, it's a wonderful document. Probably third, I don't know, it's probably 30, 40 pages. But we've been reading through it as a, as a staff, mm-hmm. and um, I don't know, maybe I'll teach a little class on it or something. There's, there's, there's a lot to be, to be said about it, but it's a beautiful document, John Paul mm-hmm. II, trying to, for the universal church, say, guys, there's a different way to live. Mm-hmm. Um, we, we've, we've, we've come to a place where we're like treating Sunday like any other day. And that's not, one, it's not the way the Lord mm-hmm. set it up. You know, it, when we read, you read through the story of creation and what happened on the, like on the seventh day, God rested. Um, right. God set it up so that so that we would have this opportunity, and not just to like rest, not just to like be sit, you know, kind of sit on the couch all day. We'll get into maybe next next episode. We'll kind of we'll talk about the difference between sort of being mm-hmm. lazy and like re- what is like what is leisure, what is real real leisure. Mm-hmm. But we need a day to to be to to dedicate to God to be and be with our families. Mm-hmm. Um, and nurture those relationships, and we've built this culture. I think, especially in the United States, where Sunday is just another day, and we wanna we wanna switch that around. We wanna we wanna get it back to the way that it was. So let's talk kind of practically for for these families who are you know maybe super involved in sports and dance, um, or just you know e- even you know kind of people who. Have you know who work who work on Sundays? Um, I don't know. We're priests. We work on Sundays. You know. Um, w- let's talk sort of practically. What what could what can a family do to kind of start moving in the direction of reclaiming Sundays? What have you seen kind of work well, in some families in our own parish and in your own family? What what can people do? Yeah, and I I think that. Um in getting to that, in getting to what what can people do, one thing we need to do, I think, is say, look, it's not just about doing the work we like doing. First of all, it's not just about like how much fun you're having about it. It's really about who this is about. You know, if I'm making a saddle, it's for the sake of riding a horse. If I am making a steering wheel, it's for the sake of driving a car. If I'm driving a car, it's for the sake of getting somewhere. <laughs> Unless it's a joy drive and I'm just driving around and it's not for some purpose. 
and uh, it's just it's just for the enjoyment of it. And I think that I, I think that practically speaking, as as people and with with families and and um, the various different uh, the first thing is just to try to carve off the time on Sunday for doing things that don't serve some other purpose that are good mm. in themselves. Um, like what? Like, um, well, obviously, first of all, like prayer, you know, the Mass and, and prayer. And so, yeah, number one, pro- prioritizing together. the ma- coming to Mass. Right. Number number one thing on a Sunday right. is that wherever you are, mm-hmm. you're... That you're you're, go, you're going you're going, going to mass. mass. Yep. But then you think about a conversation, like a conversation that isn't about business, or isn't about merely about stats and and running, uh, running, you know, calculations on uh, for fantasy football or something like that. But a conversation that's simply about getting to know another person doesn't serve some use. It's in some sense. Useless. It's a good in and of itself, <laughs> and and it's a uselessness that is very much more full than any usefulness can be, because it's about actually knowing, getting to know the other person, and enjoying their company. Um, so, like, uh, I th- I just think there are a lot of different things that families can do, and in my own family, when my dad became Catholic and started to interiorize these various different things, and to take them very seriously, he was very zealous about, you know, living the faith that he had embraced. And so one of the things that my parents invited my siblings um, and me and all, all our whole family to do was just to say, especially as we got older and we moved out of the, out of home, you know, people off in college or people getting married and different things. It was like on Sunday evenings at five o'clock, we'll have the rosary at our house. That's what my parents said. We'll be praying the rosary at five o'clock and if you're available, you're welcome. So wow. come and pray the rosary at five o'clock, and then stay in, in you know, and stay for dinner. And we hang out and um, and spend time. And so, you know, maybe get out to mom and dad's at, um, you know, maybe we get out. I get out there at three, um, or or at four or something. And there's an hour or two until the rosary. Great. Um, Throwing frisbee around with my nieces and nephews, yeah. or, or so sitting this around and enjoying. Happening. This is still happening. Yeah, I'm I'm out in this Stillwater, so I'm a little further away. This happened. It started when several years ago. When you were a teenager. Ago. Yeah. Well, I I guess this didn't quite start when I was a teenager. It probably started about the time I was in college. Okay. But it came out. What I think is beautiful is like it. It wasn't like. I think people sometimes have a have a um, an image of the families of priests, and g- get it out of your head that like the families of priests are like these magical, perfect right. places, right? Mm-hmm. They're not, right? We we and so like your so your dad converted to Catholicism, and that started your parents on a. Right. It started a, a real journey like, for him. Cause, what, how can we? Yeah. What What is the Lord? How is the Lord asking me to live? And it wasn't this overnight. Your dad became Catholic, and then the next day, right. like the Healy's all became saints. You know, like yeah, you're on a journey for that. But like over over right. time, so mm-hmm. he became Catholic when you were a teenager, and he started seeing a conflict between his Catholic faith and the call to, you know. Um, really make the day of the Lord about the Lord. And the Protestant work ethic that he had imbibed, you know, very ardent Methodist all his life, you know, which was this whole, you know, if if you're tired, you need to take a nap. If you're not tired, go then do work. something. Then work, yeah. You know, make some, be productive in some way. Um, and so he, I think he, it really kind of, there was this um, movement in his heart and his movement, and he was really my dad, I think, who led the charge on this. So as my parents were starting to have their kids all growing up and moving away, and there was a question like, how are we going to, when are we to see each other that we are spending time? It very naturally became the answer to all of that. It was like, I don't have to try to figure out how I'm going to see my siblings, <laughs> see my older sisters who are married and my younger brother who's married and in the Air Force and stuff like If he's around, if he's nearby, I know I'm going to see him on Sunday 
uh, at my five parents o'clock. at five o'clock if I'm able to go out there and like them that's that's the prime time for wow. and if it you know if I'm driving and I'm not going to get there by five o'clock <laughs> but I'm going to get there five by five fifteen say hey can you hold the rosary wow um, and so it's not always at my parents either like sometimes my, my sister will host as your it family at her place yeah as your family or my brother hosted at his or, place so. yeah people get married so it's kids. very fluid it's very fluid sometimes it's like well, we have this graduation party or a goodbye party for some friends who are moving away and stuff. So we're going to take that's going to take the place of of uh, our our regular Sunday rosary. And you know, I all of us are as, as we grow up. There's a sense of like, well, yeah, we have to live our lives. We have various different things, and so sometimes we're not able, not able to come. So yeah, you have a funeral have, or something, or you know, I or, have various different things. Yeah. Or I have youth group or something on an evening. Well then, then that just says, well, I'm not going to be able to be there. But the whole notion of being together as a family, praying together, eating together, enjoying each other's company, loving the Lord together, and being able to invite people. My mom made it very clear immediately as soon as we started doing this. It's like, if you have somebody to invite, invite them and so let us know and we'll just add a plate. That's a beautiful piece of this that I think we want to in- enculturate into the life of the parish, right? So there, if you have a family, you know, you have, you mm-hmm. come from a big family and nieces and nephews and like beautiful, right? But now think, go outside of your own family. Who, mm-hmm. who in your world needs, needs a friend, needs, needs some community. And so mm-hmm. thinking of people who might be lonely, who might be widows, mm-hmm. um, people whose family lives far away, uh, one of the things I love about Stillwater, so I think this is something already in our culture, is there's a lot of international students here. Um, mm-hmm. And so over what a lot of families do over Thanksgiving, over Christmas, they're, they're on the lookout for those international students who, who, can't, who aren't flying home to Nigeria and Cameroon and China. Um, mm-hmm. they're, 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 and so they, and they invite them in. That mentality... That the mentality of hospitality, of of pulling other people into the, your right. into your Lord's day, um, and if you have really something beautiful. set up, if you have something that you're regularly doing, that this is our routine, this is what we do on Sunday evenings together. Um, to be uh, to see that as a framework, where it's not like, well, this is my my little myopic world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it doesn't have to be. It, it doesn't have to be including other people. It doesn't have to be. It's not like it's my myopism. Uh, if uh, if you maintain that structure in that, in just spending time with your family, but it also is a wonderful opportunity to say we've got this. You know, it's an easy, easy to plug other people into praying Something rosary that's and having dinner. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think so. So as as you're listening to this, I don't know. Does that what the Healy's have done? For me, like that, it's very challenging. Like, okay, mm-hmm. how am I? What is what am I? What do my Sundays look like? Do they just look like any other day, or is this is that something? We, you know, what they've done, rosary at five o'clock, and then dinner. Is that something that you and your family, as you're listening to this, that that mm-hmm. you could do? And where, growing up, wherever you are, partially one of the things I want to get across is like to our listeners is like, I didn't grow up with us praying the rosary as a family. Uh, we yeah, we prayed the rosary we every day. Yeah, for my dad's conversion, we yep. we prayed for his for his guidance, his leadership of the family, and it was like everything the graces he needed. While my dad was at work, you know, <laughs> <laughs> folding laundry and yeah, you know, yeah. And praying the rosary together. But but it wasn't something that we did on Sunday. It wasn't because you know we our whole family wasn't united in the faith. One one of the things that happened immediately as when my dad became Catholic was a sense of, whoa, we're united as a family in a way I've never experienced before. And now we have to figure out what, what that means. Like, if we are praying the rosary together, we can pray all of us together. And my dad's not like, well, I'm kind of off on the outs, outs or whatever. Um, but, but just in general, seeing it, uh, you know, Sunday was always a, a day of, of familial affection, but wanting to make it more than that, wanting to make it more than just like the bond of of blood and, yeah. and just the 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 natural affection that families have, which is 
which is good, but saying this is this has got to be the high point. We want to make this the top um, point of interaction and of building of our up of our family together and bring other people into that. And, and so yeah, that's beautiful. So one, mm -hmm. so two two things we're doing in this parish in St. Francis Xavier in Stillwater. Um, we've made a decision um, to take off uh we are not going to have parish it, it's a going to be a very rare thing to have parish activities here on sunday nights right now i know other parishes do and this is not a judgment you do everybody's got to do kind of what what works we've made a decision in to order things to off of sunday nights that we would normally right to facilitate yeah. families being together and families and individuals being able to get together in their homes, we're, we used to have a, a lot of things on Sunday nights, and we're just not going to do that anymore. Um, right. And that's, you know, it's a little risky. I remember as we kind of prayed about it and, and thought about it, you know, gosh, well, that's a change from something that, mm -hmm. that we're doing. Um, and it might come with, you know, some criticism, or it might come with, um, people, you know, not not particularly liking that, or the idea that, gosh, we've have, we've always done, you know, we do we've done a lot of youth stuff, middle school and high school stuff on on Sunday nights, um, and we're just not going to do that. And part of it anymore, the, I think, part of the reason that we want to talk about that decision and that move is that we don't just want it to be a vacuum that fills up with dust bunnies, you oh, know, good. like more more time for right. stuff. Yay! We we just make Sunday really not about. Anything. I think part of the reason that a lot of parishes, and I think the part of the reason our parish did have things on Sunday evenings, was like, well, this is a we not need to make sure that the that as much as we can, we can help people to live Sunday as a as a day for the Lord. And but I think part of this is realizing like there's a wonderful interplay between the the ecclesia, the church, and the ecclesiola, the little church, which is the domestic church, the, of the domestic home. church of the home. Yeah, and saying. What happens on Sunday morning, what happens in the in the Holy Mass needs to radiate out into all the little uh, all the little cultures and all the communities of our of our parish and and find root there. And so when we take the time that we have with the Blessed Sacrament and the time where we're adoring the Lord together, and then we move that into our familiar relationships and our friendly relationships and the things that we're doing Sunday evening, it bears a lot of fruit. Um, so yeah, just wanting to, I think, um, encourage people that, yeah, this is something un that's going to be somewhat unfamiliar, especially if you've been involved in various different things that the parish has had on Sunday evenings. Um, Say well, well, now we have this kind of vacuum. What do we do with it? And not not simply want to say people, oh, we're not going to have something. You do something, and then bye. <laughs> you know, yeah. you know, take care of yourself. Um, but wanting to coach and, and invite other people to like yourselves who are listening to consider that there's a great deal that can be done that uh, on a Sunday evening that is very much for the sake of of resting holy and totally yeah in the lord and in each other and building that so that's so that so that's one decision we made starting starting immediately um our so our middle school um sundays is going to be on sunday mornings in between our mm -hmm. morning masses and then our high school um main kind of high school activities are going to be on wednesday nights um, including confirmation so so that's one thing that we're doing the other thing we're going to do as as a as a rectory we want to kind of set the set the example Mm -hmm. is once a month we're going to be having people over to our home uh, on, on Sunday nights as a way to get people together. Uh, we're, so we're, we're still working on kind of how the how that will exactly work. But what we're hoping is that that kind of catches fire and so that mm -hmm. other people will do what we're doing, and ha that is having people to their homes, families getting together, individuals getting together, neighbors getting together um, on Sunday for no reason. To just, just to love the Lord. Be together. Ah. All right. We'll, we'll keep this going. We'll pick this up next time. God bless.